Welcome all to the April 12th, 2021 meeting of the Public Safety and Human Relations Commission, City of San Bernardino. Uh, we're starting at approximately 6.09. We, we apologize to the public for the delay, had a little IT problem, but it has been resolved. Uh, we will uh, begin. with uh, the Pledge of Allegiance and uh, Commissioner Tumbach. All right, place your hand over your heart. Ready to begin. I pledge allegiance <laughs> to the flag, the flag of the United, United States, States of, America of America and to and the Republic for, for which it stands, one, one, one nation, nation under God. God. Indivisible, Indivisible, with liberty, with liberty and justice, and justice for, all. for all. Thank you very much, sir. Um, all right, roll call, Susie. Are you getting that feedback? No, no feedback nope. for you guys? I'm, I hear a dog barking. Dog. <laughs> And if you all would, please uh, just uh, mute your mic um, if you have background and you're, you're not speaking. That'll help us. Roll call. I have the feedback, so let me get rid of it really quick. Okay, can you hear me? Yes, we can. All right. Roll call? Yes, please. Commissioner Lanas? Here. Present. I can't hear anything. Yes, she's here. Commissioner Kelly, she advised that she wouldn't be attending today, so she's excused. Commissioner Walters? Here. Present. Vice Chairman Tombach? Present. Commissioner Peden? Present. Commissioner Jarman? Present. Commissioner Cervantes? Present. Commissioner Carrillo? Present. And Chairman Elliott? Present. Okay. Can, right. I'm sorry. Can we pause for another second? I, I can't hear any of you. Also, I um, will acknowledge that we have tonight uh, uh, Chris Jensen, uh, who's the Director of Public Works, uh, representing the Public Works Department, um, along with Alex. Uh, in addition, we have um, Captain Pellis, uh, who is representing uh, Chief McBride in the Police Department. Uh, 
uh, and Chief Mejia, uh, who's representing the fire department, uh, is our staff online with us tonight. All right, um, Susie, are there any public comments for items listed and not listed on the agenda? There are none. No public comments, thank you. All right, uh, we'll move to item number one, which is the approval. Actually, items number one, two, and three are under consent. Uh, and item number one is the minutes from last last meeting. Uh, item number two is a move to continue uh, uh, the draft uh, letter that I and Dan just haven't got to. Uh, and uh, item number three is a receive and file on the city council guidance uh, for adding items to the agenda. Is there a motion? So moved. Moved by Commissioner Peden. Is there a second? Yes. Walters. I'm sorry, who was that? Walters. Oh, all right, the second by Walters. All right, thank you. Um, all in favor say aye. 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 Are there any opposition? All right, the record will reflect that it is unanimous. Uh, let me just add in your backup, uh, there is a copy of the resolution um, which uh, the mayor and council adopted uh, as it relates to items getting added on the agendas. And uh, we'll follow that guidance also. Um, also, uh, let me. Let me acknowledge uh, also uh, on with us tonight uh, is our council member from the seventh ward, Councilman Alexander, and uh, uh, we we welcome him tonight. Commissioner Tombaugh. Yeah, question that I have is, does the resolution for the council apply to committees? Uh, when I read the material, uh, it didn't really state that it would apply to um, commissions as opposed to uh, applying only just to the council? The city manager advised that this is the city policy now across the board. Okay, thank you for that clarification. Sure. All right, item number four uh, is uh, the San Bernardino County first quarter report. Uh, and Chief Mayor. Good evening. I got to start with an apology. I know that last meeting you asked that uh, we bring forward some stats or whatever we had on, on any incidents that dealt with um, transient people. Um, unfortunately, uh, our prevention bureau actually gathers that information for us and they were unable to, for whatever reason, get me that information. I promise you that, uh, Next meeting, we'll have it and we'll present it then. Uh, what we did this meeting was we pulled together the first quarter stats. So we talked about um, reporting every quarter on types of incidents and response times. So that's what this is. It's actually broken down by uh, stations so you can see. So this is January 1st through the end of March. Uh, I'll answer any questions you have in regards to that. Okay, so this is your uh, uh, fire stats uh, for quarter one, 2021. Correct. Uh, so there was a total of 9,950 calls for service? Correct. Wow, okay. Uh, questions from commissioners? Uh, this is uh, Tom Buck. Okay, sir. There is no category there for suspicious homeless fires, arsons, um, any of the categories that I think we're really interested in knowing, uh, fireworks. Uh, is there a way of expanding the accounting on the stats? So I, ha I had a conversation with our fire chief about this, and just like I'm going to echo what we talked about last meeting that we're really reluctant to put out anything that that isn't uh just factual and we're not in the business of determining somebody's uh living status so uh any of those incidents that we prosecute or we determine somebody to be a transient or 
or of homeless nature, then then we'll go ahead and report that. But we don't have uh, we're not out asking people their their status. Um, as far as arsons, I did ask our prevention bureau to put together for the next report to show us how many arson fires we have and uh, their status. He he told me that basically what you see, unless you actually have um, somebody in custody, that they'll always show that they're under investigation or undetermined. Um, but if that's what you're looking for, we could show you those. Um, so he's compiling that. The problem we're having is, is that those ones have to be gone through manually. So that's why they're time consuming and they take us a little bit of time to pull those together. As far as fireworks, uh, I do want to say that we were successful. We're, we're not, our reporting system isn't just county fire. We have other agencies involved. So anytime we want to do a drop down screen, um, it affects other agencies and we have to do some uh, education to why we need it. Uh, we were able to add last Wednesday, went live with a fireworks related uh, drop down screen. The problem is, is that when it went live, um, it's working intermittently. So they're still working on that. Um, we're hoping to be able to have that thing up and running and be able to start pulling stats as back as, you know, as of Wednesday. So as soon as we can get some stats for you, hopefully the next quarter we'll have some. Um, and that's where we're at with that. Well, my next question would be, we have homeless and then we have squatters. So we may not be able to determine whether somebody's homeless or not, but we can determine whether somebody is a squatter living in a building that started on fire. For example, uh, the commercial buildings on Highland, the, the restaurants that caught on fire. Uh, do we know what that status was? Were they started by squatters? Again, we'd be making some assumptions. Um, we investigate for cause and origin. And once you do that, you interview the people to find out if you know who started it other than just how it started. But unless we actually have somebody that's willing to come forward, and most of the time you got to remember, we get to these fires and they're empty. You know, you can make an assumption that they're squatters. You can make an assumption that, uh, um, but that's not what we're doing. So well, they could in even though it's not factual, they could be investigative leads. So I think this would be pretty important for the city and for the uh, citizens in San Bernardino to know uh, what fires are related to possibly homeless situations or squatters. Um, so I don't know exactly how to word the statistic that I want, but you can see how important it would be for the citizens of San Bernardino to know uh, what that situation is in terms of homeless and fires. We've had a lot of fires lately. No, I, I agree, but uh, as far as we're concerned, like I told you, we're not in, uh, we're not gonna go and start gathering or making assumptions on people. And that's from the fire chief. Um, and I will acknowledge that we had a lengthy uh, discussion on on this uh, last meeting, and Commissioner Tombuck was not here. Uh, but uh, uh, there was a lengthy conversation about it. Can I ask you? I'm sorry. Was was there anything else, Commissioner Tombuck? No, that's it. Um, can I ask you, sir? Uh, what what falls under other fire? So, if we can't classify it, let's say. Um... It's not debris. Maybe it's somebody has set a piece of furniture on fire or something that doesn't fall under these major categories. We'll go ahead and classify it as a, an other. And the next column is investigation. Uh, what is that? So let's say somebody calls in a fire. They see smoke or they smell smoke in the area or they think there's a fire and we get out there and it's not. We classify those as just under an investigation. So we went out and actually just investigated the area. and We didn't find anything there. So oh, okay. it's that that we keep to show how many of these calls that we go on that um, don't materialize to fall in the other categories. 
So there were 376 calls in the first quarter, but that were nothing. Yes. Wow. Okay. I think something should be said there too about citizens uh, or persons calling in reports. That's a horrible waste of your resources uh, right there. So maybe some public education is important to that. Well, I think a lot of times with that, you see uh, people really, uh, you might see heavy equipment starting up in the morning and it puts up a cloud of smoke. Well, somebody's going to pick up the phone and call and say, hey, there might be a fire. So that might warrant a call. um, Or they think it's a car crash. They heard something and sound like a car crash. We get there and all the parties are gone. Um, So I think that their intent is good. I don't think it's bad. I think it just, it didn't materialize to what they thought it was. Okay. Um, Other commissioners, questions or comments? Commissioner Peter. Hello, I I have a quick question. Well, two questions. Um, One on the structure fire. I just wanted to, I'm interested in knowing, um, are those separated between uh, residential and commercial? If you can kind of touch on that. So yes, we, we do, we break them down into commercial and residential. Here, we just went ahead and lumped them together. Um, but yeah, normally in our reporting system, we can break them down between commercial and residential. Okay, and do you know offhand which one's kind of the, the highest for um, the city? Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, typ- typically, we run more residential fires than, stru- than residential fires. I mean, residential fires than commercial fires. Okay, thank you. And then the, uh, you, the second, oh, go ahead. No, I was going to ask, do you know that number or do you have that in front of you, sir? Uh, no, because we they didn't, when they did this report, they just lumped them all into structure fires. But we, we could break them down commercial versus uh, residential if you'd like. Yeah, I think that would be helpful. Um, the other question I, I have is on the traffic collision. I'm not sure if I see it on here, but um, for the traffic collision, do you know this is, again? This is like another like how do we look at the data? Uh, do we know how many of those are fatal? And I guess that's kind of uh, could be across the board. But is there yeah, we, any way? To, go ahead. Um, I'm trying to think. We I, I'm trying to think. We probably could go and get that. And and what we're doing is these are two. That would be two separate reporting systems. So we'd have to go to it. Uh, so when we go to a call. Uh, a traffic accident is a perfect example. And we have patients. It requires us to fill out a patient contact form, which is handled by ISMA, which oversees the the, uh, the medical side of the county. And then that's a separate form. And then the form that we actually pull this data from is from our MFIRS forms. And it's just the call types that we respond okay. to. So we would have to go. And, and sometimes we don't know because when we drop off somebody, they're still a live viable patient and then they might pass. And so again, we don't get that data because of HIPAA inf- uh, violations. So we wouldn't know if they did, unless the investigation was started and we, we don't manage that site. All right, thank you. And uh, and often if it was a fatal involving a TC, uh, then PD would normally be involved. Right, right, Dr. Sorry, I had to unmute myself. That's correct. Okay, so th- so that that stat would show up on PD side somewhere. Yes, right. we do track fatal collisions on our side. Okay, um, and then I think Commissioner Peden is asking for the uh, for the breakout between um, commercial and residential uh, on the fires, if that can be easily attained, Chief Mayor. Yeah, it will be. Yeah. Okay. Anything else, Commissioner Peter? Anyone else? Can we get a list of the stations and locations? Because as I'm reading this chart and I'm looking at station 222, I kind of remember where it is, but not exactly. So maybe a list of uh, the locations of the stations and, and their designations, maybe for the next yeah, Is there a list uh, posted on, on the FIRE's website? I think there is on County Fire's website of all of our addresses. And the corresponding station numbers? Correct. Okay. Is it a list that uh, I have to sort through for all the stations in the county, or is it just specific to the city? No, you'd have to sort through them. You'd have to know the station numbers. But I, I could go ahead and easily pull that together for you. 
Okay, thank you. Any other commissioners? Commissioner uh, Charman, where are you? I, I'm here. Um, yeah. I have a question in regards to um, uh, use of fireworks, particularly uh, illegal fireworks. And uh, w w if a uh, fire was started as a result of someone uh, setting off some of those, is, is that included in this, in this list also? No. And, and that was what we were talking about that we're going to be going, we are going alive with is uh, just as of last Wednesday in tracking those fire related incidents, fireworks related. So it will show up in the following subsequent reports. Right. Oh, okay. Um, one of the questions I, I know, I, I think uh, ABC was gonna, gonna do a special regarding uh, use of fireworks, illegal fireworks uh, in the county San Bernardino. I, I didn't look at it, but is, is that an application um, that it's available for reporting. So, so the, right, presently what we, what we do with fireworks in, in the city is we have a reporting system and we're just collecting data where people call in and say, hey, they're setting off fireworks in this neighborhood. And it shows us kind of the hot spots and where we're getting the most reports. And then I think what the special is on tonight is there's a new system that it's a no contact um, uh citation system and it really doesn't apply to San Bernardino City because PD has the citation responsibilities or rights here in the city but in the county areas we were instituting a no contact uh, citation pro uh, policy and that's what I think the the news is going to show tonight. Okay. Oh that's impressive. Captain Pellis? Yes. Uh, How's that sound to PD and no contact citation? Well, I think uh, anytime we can limit contact, it's a nice option, but our business is, is that contact with the public every day. So, you know, to carve that out just for fireworks violations, I think would be difficult for us to do, but it's certainly something that would be of interest. What about potentially partnering up with uh, fire, at least to, as, as they, as, I, as I'm understanding the chief, that's something they're going to start doing. Maybe this is a pilot with you all, uh, Chief Mayor. Is this is the first so, time. Doing it? Yes, it's the first time we're going to do it. I, I think Chief Horton was reaching out to San Diego City to have these discussions because we are in partnership with them on fireworks. Yeah. Um, so I, I'm, I really wasn't aware where they were at with those talks. I like it. I think the two should talk. Uh, I don't get to make that call, but I do think the two should talk. Uh, any other commissioners? All right. Uh, 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 Ter Terry, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay. I, can, I lost my, my visual on the screen myself. I'm sorry. All right. Commissioner Correa. Um, I, I wanted to know if, if there was uh, geographic information uh, that would show where the incidents of both fireworks and fires are? So we could put together a heat map and show you where um, those things are. Now, we're not tracking the fireworks. We do have on, like I told you, uh, our prevention side is running an app right now that shows um, where the fireworks complaints are coming from. So we do have that. Um, and we could put together a heat map that would show you where our fires are. And it kind of just shows you in, in the geographical areas in the city where you tend to have more fires than others. I appreciate that, Chief. I appreciate the whole conversation. I know it's a lot of work. So we could, we could produce a, a, a map that would reflect the first quarter uh, for the for the heat map for fires, and we'll show you one for the reporting system on fireworks, and I'll, pre I'll present it next to you. It might be interesting to to watch the maturation of this process, especially as we go into fireworks season. That really might be interesting to to watch. Um, could I also um, ask you, sir, out of these? Uh, 9,900 calls. Um, 
I had something in my brain and it's now gone. But it was a nice start to a sentence. <laughs> <laughs> um, can um, I just share something? I'm sorry, who, who is that? It's Susie. Oh, yes. So on www.sbcity.org, if you um, click on contact us and go to fire, it lists all of the stations that service San Bernard, the city of San Bernardino. And by number. Yes. Okay, great. So, so and their uh, it is on the city's website. There is a listing of all the stations and their corresponding numbers. All right. Um, what I suggest to do here, uh, given that, uh, the chief is going to bring back to us some data from prevention along with some other pieces to this is um, just to ask for a motion to continue this item to the next meeting. If there is consensus for that. Make the motion, Ricardo. All right, move by Tom Bach, second. All second. Second by Carrillo. Are there any that oppose? Seeing and hearing none, uh, it'll be unanimous. Uh, the items continue to the next meeting. And that's just, Chief, for you to get in the other data you said you were going to bring in. Okay, thank you. Along with this heat map and et cetera, et cetera. Okay, great. Um, staff reports, none. New business, none. Uh, the next item is, this is really fantastic. Uh, items to be considered for future meetings. Uh, the first Item is number five, uh, that is to identify locations similar to the Oxbow site uh, that could potentially be causing health impacts on our community. This is Commissioner Peden's item. Commissioner Peden, you have the floor. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, I just wanted to bring this forward to the commission to see if we can possibly um, have this move forward on our agenda. Uh, just to kind of give you some context of what where this came from was I did, I did attend um, a community meeting and regarding the Oxbow site, I think it was several weeks ago now. Um, and there, there was a lot of community members there. And amongst the, amongst the topic of, of discussion was the, this, um, not, not an idea, but this, this issue that perhaps there are other um, concrete type piles in the city that could potentially be causing harm um, or specific types of inequities into certain communities of our, of our community um, or, you know, areas of our community. And I know on my notes here, I got, I, I believe it was mentioned in Ward 3 and Ward 6. So I, I, I'm taking it upon myself to, to uh, I believe that this is kind of falls within our, our human relations um, scope of our commission. Um, not so much the land use part of it, but really getting down to the, the part of the, you know, the, is it equitable? What does it look like? Is it causing inequities in our community? Um, who, who's being impacted by these types of sites? Um, so I, I was hoping that we could get that on the agenda if everybody agrees, so we could start kind of unpacking this issue um, and looking at it from kind of just a holistic approach on what do we do uh, moving forward. And I know some of you probably do know that I believe the city council has kind of talked about other sites. I'm not sure where that where that is going but I do believe it falls within our scope of our, of our commission. And that was an issue that was, uh, that was blatantly put out by a city council member at a council meeting. Chairman. Um, oh, yes, yes, Ms. Jen. Elliot, I'm sorry, Commissioner Peden, thank you. Hello all. Um, so on this topic and um, yeah, we, we kind of talked about it a little bit and completely understand um, and appreciate it um, coming forward um, kind of through this commission, um, kind of under the umbrella of safety, right, for the community and the equity piece. Um, but when we were kind of talking about it and, and looking at the resolution for the commission and the commission's um, kind of advisory um, role, um, the commission really, the resolution kind of establishes that the commission serves um, in that capacity for safety items related to kind of police, fire, and traffic issues. Just sharing. So um, as we were kind of looking at it and looking at the, um, the, the policies, you know, that were um, established recently by the city council, um, just alternatively, um, I would suggest um, possibly sharing this with um, 
your appointing council member, who I believe is council member Reynoso, right? And and yes, um, Chairman um, Elliot, we, we have heard um, about kind of some of these other sites, but really this is an issue that probably should be um, taken by the council member, maybe through the city manager or through city council to have that kind of um, direction come from the full council to the commission for us to to do something like that. It's a big undertaking um, in terms of staff time. Yeah, and I think, uh, Ms. Jensen, uh, respectfully, I think right now, uh, I think we're all going to get ourselves in a lot of trouble here. I think right now the issue is uh, just to ask it to be put on the agenda for the next meeting. Got it. To figure out or sort through these pieces and we may have to ask the city attorney to come and all that other stuff. Uh, so as I understand it, uh, um, uh, this narrow purpose for tonight uh, is if we would consent to the item being put on the next agenda. That's sure. All. And, and, then, and, and, and I, then I apologize. Should, should we pass that, uh, then uh, we will reach out to the appropriate staff or whatever to ask Got it. I'm prepared with a staff report on how to respond. Um, I did understand uh, uh, Chairman Peden to say that he was looking in the specific narrow issue of uh, potential inequities among the community. Uh, but again, that's an answer we can ask for um, the city manager to come, staff to come, whatever. But first, we've got to get it on the agenda uh, if that's the consensus of the commission. Sure. And my apologies. Did not mean to break into discussion. Just wanted to kind of share that um, kind of that al alternative route for for an item such as this. So thank you, Commissioner. All right. Thank you. Um, uh, is that your your motion, Commissioner Peden? It is. And, and I, again, I don't want to. Yeah, I don't want to. Is there go a into second to that motion? Yes. Sorry. The itemize to, to put it on the agenda. Is there a second to the motion? I'll oh, second. Sorry. Jarman. Second by Jarman. All right. Is there any opposition to the motion? Hearing none. All right. Uh, it is agenda for the next meeting. And again, we'll reach out. Uh, Commissioner Peden happens to be uh, the chair of the, your subcommittee, so he can reach to you directly to kind of whatever. And then we'll get with, uh, again, we'll get with uh, Susie and we'll talk to the city attorney and all the other players in this and see if somebody can come back and perhaps give us guidance once the item is listed for discussion. Sounds good. Thank you. Thank you, thank you uh, Commissioner Peden. Thank you. Um, item number six is also Commissioner Peden's. It is an illegal street bending update. Commissioner Peden. Yeah, so this is a, um, this is, has to do with public safety as well as um, I believe that in our human relations component of our commission. Um, <laughs> so I'm, again, I'm having some, I know we spoke about this in the commission, I think several, a couple of meetings back, it was kind of just briefed on. Um, I did have some community members come to me and they're, they're sharing some concerns that uh, they believe that law enforcement is perhaps targeting or the city is targeting um, some of these street vendors um, and potentially maybe um, enforcing something that they believe they don't have jurisdiction over enforcing. Uh, I, so my, instead of, I don't, of course, I don't want to break into discussion here, but I think hopefully that we can, I would like to see on the agenda kind of a full evaluation of this street vendor policy that was passed by the city council, um, kind of looking at the evaluation of it, how it was implemented, how it is continuing to be implemented, and how it's being enforced. Okay. Again, uh, uh, and you're specifically... Uh, wanting some of that information from PD, correct? Uh, yes, I think that's appropriate, correct. Okay. All right. Uh, uh, is that your motion? Yes. All right, is there a second? One second. Walter. Walter, second. Is, is there any opposition to the motion? All right, thank you. It'll be on the next agenda and we'll get with Captain Pellis to see what what data, uh, if any, that they can provide to it. I know this has uh, honestly been, uh, uh, this is something close to him, so I'm sure he has some good information. 
Yeah. If I can just, uh, if you don't mind, uh, sure. Chairman, if I could ask some clarification. So, um, Commissioner Peden, you mentioned a full evaluation of the policy as implemented by the council. That that part's a little challenging because obviously the council is the one that sets the policy. Uh, so I think what we can do is provide an overview of what the municipal code requires and, and what it states in terms of our city's position on street vending uh, that the council uh, saw fit to put into place. And then your follow-up questions about how the city's uh, code is being implemented and how it's being enforced. We can certainly do a, a general sure, overview of what, what we're doing in that sense. sense. But I wanted but to I wanted make sure, sure if there's any specifics you're looking for in terms, in terms of statistics or anything. Sure. Sure. Go, 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 go ahead. Yeah. Sure. sure. It, you know, let us know what that is so we can make sure to cover that and anything you prepare for the next commission meeting. Okay. Also, we ask for um, uh, stats as to kind of enforcement stats, if you have those, Captain. Of course. And uh, we might need to bring code enforcement in on this to, to see uh, what data they may have on this also. So we'll, we'll seek to get code enforcement to respond also uh, in our next meeting, Commissioner Peter. Thank you. Okay. Um, Item number seven um, is uh, from Vice Chair Tombuck. Um, I'm going to ask uh, uh, Commissioner Tombuck, uh, with us having continued item number four, which is, uh, and the fire chief saying he's going to bring us back that data uh, at the next meeting, and we have continued it until then. Uh, does that satisfy uh, your, your request on item number seven? Yes. Okay, great. Uh, so um, um, can we table item number seven? I move the table. Well, I'd like some of the bullet points moved over so that uh, uh, we can be consistent. One of the things I wanted was a monthly report versus a quarterly so, so report. To be clear, sir, to be clear, um, uh, if, if his coming back on item number four and addressing uh, the things he committed to address, if that does satisfy your request, uh, then we're done with that. If that does not satisfy your request, then uh, then you have the floor to to um, take it further. I'll go ahead and take it further. Okay, sorry, sir. Your item. Thanks. It's your item, Commissioner Tomo. Yes, I'm. Uh, I'm uh, into that page. Okay. Um, one of the things that I wanted to see is specific reporting on items that uh, we normally don't get. And I wanted it on a consistent basis. Uh, uh, back, I believe it was a year and a half ago, I requested a monthly report. Um, and then back then it was changed to a quarterly report. Uh, I think that the information that we want is so that we can kind of plan and we can use it for strategy events uh, or situations. Um, so some of the things that I'd want to report on is specifically uh, fire-related uh, uh, events that are related to homeless. Now, you just told us that that's not possible, uh, but can we change that? So I know that, it, that you, you say it's not possible, but I, I want to be able to see if we can change that to make it possible. Uh, this is information that I believe is really important to the community. So, uh, and, and, and that's kind of like the the basic part of this thing is just getting that information on fireworks and homeless is uh, getting more specifics on that. Uh, and if we can do that, 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 that is that, your document, which is attached to the backup, which delineates several several categories. That is, that is what you wish uh, to come back on the agenda, correct? Yes. Okay, great. Is that your motion? Yes. Is there a second? All second. Second by Carrillo. All right. Is there any opposition? Any opposition? No opposition? All right. Uh, seeing none. 
uh, then that item will be properly scheduled. And if you would reach out to uh, Chairman Jarman of the Fire Subcommittee uh, and uh, and Chief Mejia, uh, they can talk. And uh, Chief Mejia, you have in the backup some of the information or specifically what will be on the next agenda to get an idea of what uh, Commissioner Tombach is asking for. Uh, back uh, quickly, just uh, uh, on the, well, let me do this the right way. Uh, on the um, vendors, um, I, I think we also need to, Susie, if you're there uh, for the next meeting, we also need to hear from the city uh, clerk uh, on this regarding uh, the business licenses and business registration. Uh, in the meeting in order to package this up correctly. We need to get the, the see who, how many vendors we have registered or whatever. We need that that staff data, which I'm sure the city clerk has, or the business license office, whoever that is, uh, if we could reach out to them so we could also have that data in the next meeting also. Okay, so... Um... That's regarding uh, Commissioner Peden's issue on the street vending. Uh, Captain Pellis is going to do his part. We need to reach out to code uh, and to the city business license. Uh, and I think all we really need to know is, is how many licensed vendors, uh, how many business registered licenses uh, do we have issued out in, in the city? Mr. Chairman, uh, if I may, uh, if that's the only component you need from business licensing, we can cover that in our report. Um, our business registration department is a part of our finance department, okay. and uh, we, we work with them pretty consistently regarding transient and uh, street vending enforcement issues. So I can certainly reach out to our contact at business licensing and get that number for you. Okay. Okay. Then, so, so then you'll just package it up for us. Great. Great, great help, sir. Thank you. Commissioner Creel, I see your finger. Yes. Um, just a, a point of clarification. Is there a distinction between food vending and merchandise vending? Captain? So I don't want to risk getting into the uh, nuts and bolts of this conversation since it's for the next council agenda. But so uh, you could bring us back to whether the code distinctly. Yes, separates. that would be fine. That, that'd be great. Okay. Cool. All right. Um, I have uh, one other uh, item that, that came after. Uh, the posting of the agenda uh, with your permission i'd like to add it simply to items to be considered for future meetings uh if there's no opposition to that okay seeing none um the item i'd like to add in is from again from the police department um and i'd like to uh i know some time ago uh the team put together a um a package for in, for the sake of a better word on a transport of prisoner transport uh, contractor or something of that nature um, and I know with the with the push to hire 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 uh, with the with the country um, and certainly the county and city opening back up um, I foresee uh, our officers and um, uh, this is probably the wrong way for me to say it uh, but hopefully our jails opening back up also uh, uh, because they're at zero bail policies. Uh, and uh, much of our officer time, uh, literally hours of our officer's time, just tied up booking people uh, at the local jails rather than on the streets. And there was some discussion some time ago, uh, pre-COVID, about um, transport systems that are being utilized by a number of other municipalities uh, who do the prisoner transports and the booking and all that. Uh, it, it just seems like to me that this would make sense uh, to potentially um, ask the council to reconsider this item, especially now that we need all the sworn that we have on the streets and to tie up an officer four or five hours um, uh, standing inside of West Valley as opposed to patrolling the streets. So I'd like to add that to the agenda and ask the police department to come back to us uh, with um, uh, that package. I know they had done it pre-COVID. We just didn't get to address it before we were shut down. Um, and if there is uh, no objection 
uh, to that. Actually, I need a motion uh, uh, to uh, add that to our next agenda. Agenda. I'll make the motion, Ricardo. Motion by Tom Bach. I'll second that. Second by Carrillo. Is there any opposition? Hearing none, that will also be on the next uh, uh, meeting's agenda, Captain Palace. And if we could get something on that. All right. Uh, item number eight is uh, Human Relations Commission and announcements or reports. Um, so we just go around the room here. Any Anything you want to announce or any reports or uh, uh, kind of an open open forum, but no action. And I'll start with the way it is on my screen. Uh, Commissioner Pina. No reports at this time. Thank you. Commissioner Carrillo. Just uh, uh, a comment. Uh, uh, on Sunday, I was uh, surrounded by about 20, uh, maybe eight or nine quads and about a dozen uh, motorcycles. I know that it's an issue that we're looking at it. But uh, at some point, I'd like to see if we could uh, do something um, that would be helpful to the police department uh, in that regard. Maybe some public uh, instruction on what to do. Uh, when Because for myself, I just maintain the same speed and I was fine. But I did notice a couple of the vehicles next to me. They are pretty, pretty shook up, especially there was one elderly. So just... Uh, want to voice that, uh, Captain, if we could do anything at all to enlighten the public or help you out. I know it's challenging. Certainly. So our community policing group uh, does public service announcement videos that we publish on social media on topics of interest to the community. Uh, if it would help, we can certainly put something together. You know, it's, it's a challenging situation. As you said, every situation is different. We have to be a little bit cautious and conscientious when we give advice to the public about matters of safety when we don't have specific facts. But, you know, in cases like that where we have seen a uh, public hazard, you know, if it's a benefit to the community, we certainly want to participate in getting a message on how to protect yourself under those types of circumstances. So do you think yeah. that that would be an appropriate approach to I, resolve that issue? You, you know, Captain, I have seen like individuals one or two and maybe even three. That was the first time that I'd ever seen that large of a group. They actually held traffic up at the intersection of Waterman and Highland at about six o'clock in the evening. And the concern is I watched a couple elderly, I don't, they looked like they were going to move out of their way. They changed lanes a little bit and, and they were like going around them. So anything in that regard, I think, especially for, for the elderly, the people that would get shook up, uh, I think would be a great, a great service for the community. Just some sort of a public safety message. And I think the chief mentioned to us uh, last last meeting, I believe, some strategies that were they, that were available for them to employ to try to deal with some of this. Uh, but from a public safety standpoint, um, you know, I ride a motorcycle. Uh, and so um, occasionally I'll, I'll ride down the freeway and there's a sign that goes across, you know, the, the what I don't know, what are those called, Trish, that are the orange signs the, that they type in their little messages or whatever uh, that says something like, you know, watch for other motorcycles on yeah. the road or something like that. Uh, uh, what are those called, Chris? Are you talking about like the message boards? Yes. <laughs> you know, it was so, it was so simple. And so I thought it was a big word for it. But all right. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, you know, uh, and so I do know I, I'm, I'm cognizant of that. Not only do I ride, but I also have been, I also have been in an accident on my bike on the freeway uh, yes. that in the hospital with seven surgeries. So I am very cognizant of it. But uh, my, I think, I think maybe um, that maybe I, I like that idea of asking the captain and them to pursue what they could do uh, without sending the wrong message to the community. Uh, I'd hate to see some elderly couple have a heart attack with all of these. Uh, so I, uh, I that'd be great. That'd be great. And we have the captain's commitment. They're going to look at something and let us know. So I like that. All right. Um, was that all, Commissioner Korea? Yes, sir. Uh, thank you all. Commissioner Walters. Yes, I don't have anything to report at this time. Uh, got a question for the captain. Uh, do we have any uh, cadets in the academy now? 
Yes, as a matter of fact, we currently have 20 law enforcement trainees enrolled in the academy. A large group are graduating in early June. I believe we have another group graduating in uh, late July, early August, and one more in September. And uh, the process is still underway. We have another large group uh, getting ready to start another academy in June. So it's a constant process and we're filling every possible seat we can with new recruits for our police department. Thank you. Thank you. So we have 20 recruits in now. Correct, yes. Wow, fantastic. Anything else for Mr. Walters? No, I'm, I'm finished, thank you. Commissioner Jarman, Chairman Jarman. Uh, no, I have nothing at this time. I'm still regrouping from having to stay in regarding for this pandemic stuff. I said I read, so I haven't, been, I haven't been going out too much. But now I have right. nothing at this time. Commissioner Tumba. Nothing at this time. Commissioner Lanis. I just want to thank the whoever cleaned up the Sacombe Park because I went by that Friday and the homeless seemed to be gone. So I say thank you for kind of cleaning it up. That would be PD. Thank you, Captain Pellis. With and quite a bit of assistance. And be involved in that too. Yeah, it's always a joint venture between Public Works and the Police Department when it comes to our encampments. And we've established a great partnership to try to get that cleanup going as often as we possibly can in those hard hit areas. Uh, Commissioner Cervantes. Yeah, on the 7th Ward, um, the only issues that we're having right now that's been real big here is uh, the racing up and down Valencia and 40th. Um, that's been uh, just gotten worse. Uh, a lot of neighbors here call and state that there's, they're afraid to walk down Valencia or, or around the golf course because of all the racing that's going on. Um, I have made contact with the police and they're working to see what they can do about the traffic. Uh, but on a good note, Wildwood Park is being locked up now in time. Uh, we noticed that they're locking it up. They're monitoring it, and it's really alleviated some of the issues that we've had here in the Seventh Ward. Yeah, uh, of course, uh, thanks to uh, thanks to our Councilman Alexander, he stayed on that. Um, you know, that's a real big thing here in the Seventh Ward. And two officers that are in the Seventh Ward that are working graveyard Arabia, Arabia, I think it is, in Blaze. I'd like to say uh, to the police department that these two guys are, are amazing. I haven't had, we haven't had this good customer service here in a long time. When I say customer service is how you interact with our community. Um, they're really good guys. They're out there. Um, they're responsive. They listen. Um, they're working hard out here in our, in, in our seventh ward. I just want to let you know that. And I'm sure you all are working hard, but I just want to let you know that these two guys, I don't know if they're new because I've never, had any interaction with them until last night but um, I've heard from other neighbors too that they've had good response with these two guys so I just want to let you know that and they're the graveyard fire. officers what was that? and they're graveyard officers yes they are, they're, they're, they're wow. graveyard they're out here in graveyard and uh, the, yeah and they're new to our area because we've never inter interacted with them until last night but really good guys um, and then with fire we've never, we have a real good good um, relationship here with fire of course because they're always at my home <laughs> I meet them all. They know me, but they're very good when they respond to the fire department. But other than that, um, that's all I have for, for this week. Great, First month. great, great, great. Uh, there is, um, um, finally, I'll say that there is uh, to remind everybody that the uh, uh, vaccinations now are open uh, to everyone uh, above the age of 16. Uh, uh, so all you need to do is reach out to uh, uh, one of the public health centers. Uh, also, it's my understanding that now CVS and Walgreens um, have the vaccinations available and uh, there is no waiting. Uh, but I would suggest that uh, if you put that information out that they, they would call ahead uh, or probably call their provider, uh, but certainly vaccines are available. Um, also today, uh, CDC approved the vaccine for 12 to 15 year olds. Uh, that was approved today also. Uh, and so I don't know about you, but we're kind of looking forward to our city getting back open. It uh, looks like we're headed in that direction, uh, but certainly safety first. Uh, and if you haven't uh, yet got your vaccination, 
uh, let's say it, um, uh, I can speak for myself, um, who was hesitant to get it. Uh, I got it uh, because I thought I needed to be an example. Uh, so I got it and had no side effects. Uh, so I want to encourage people who may be hesitant, uh, of course, talk to your health provider. Uh, but uh, we want to, we certainly would like to have as much of our city safe and healthy and alive as possible. Uh, with that, um, uh, this will conclude our meeting for today, May the 10th at 6 p.m. Gary, can, can I say just one more thing? God bless you, law enforcement people. You have law enforcement week starting or uh, encompassing this week. Just want to say thank you for all the very hard work you do, the things you do for us, uh, the risk you take, and that includes you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, and all the first responders included in that, too. Um, yeah, I shouldn't have overlooked that. This is Law Enforcement Appreciation Week, and uh, a lot of a lot of uh, men and women um, get a bad rap, especially in the current news. Uh, but thank, thank God um, we have a, a pretty tight department here, not had to encounter any of that crazy stuff we've been seeing on TV. And, uh, and we do recognize that these, these men and women actually put their lives out on the line to do a very dangerous job. And so uh, uh, I join in commending all of our law enforcement personnel uh, and this week. And, you know, take a minute and tell your constituency. I love what uh, Commissioner Cervantes did, uh, where, where you notice, you know, usually you hear about the bad things. Uh, but when you notice something good, uh, put that out, too. Uh, because we want to appreciate that we've got some good officers and some good people out trying to do some good work. Uh, so in, in our social media comments and your public social media comments, be sure um, to put that out there in the public so we can say thank you to the men and women of our fire departments, all of our first responder people who again do a dangerous job and they get beat up. Uh, and so where where we do notice a good by all means, publish it. Let's give them the credit and appreciation they deserve. Um, all right, back to where I'm at. This concludes our meeting today, May the 10th, 2021, of the Public Safety and Human Relations Commission. Um, we are going to be adjourned until Monday, June the 14th. Uh, before I do that, may I ask Susie, um, Susie, are you aware of uh, when I heard that we may be going back uh, in person in June or July, are you aware? The uh, city council plans to go back um, in person on July 21st. Okay. So I'm not sure if um, we follow suit or if we okay. could have our July meeting in person. I'll check on that. Council member Alexander is on. Maybe I can ask him. Maybe he can tell us. Or give us. Uh, you guys, got, you guys are going to follow suit. Okay, so that would mean then that we would go. Then we would go back live in August, our August meeting. Uh, right, Susie. Okay, so we'll follow council, which is July the twenty first. So, so August, our our meeting of August, uh, if all goes well as planned, uh, will be in person uh, rather than via Zoom. So hey, that would we, be August ninth. I'm sorry. That would be August 9th. August, the August 9th meeting would be in person. And we'll be back at 201? I believe so. Okay, great. The boardroom. All right. Um, so we'll be adjourned until Monday, June the 14th, 2021. I encourage you to um, reach out uh, if there are fire concerns to reach out to um, Chairman Jarman of our fire subcommittee. Um, if you have public work concerns, uh, please reach out to uh, Chairman Peden. And um, Chris, uh, uh, if Susie, will you see to it that uh, both commissioners have direct contacts to uh, the department heads uh, so that uh, you all can talk? And Chris, you'll get a chance to talk with Mr. Peden about some of his other concerns and things like that. And again, the subcommittees, to be clear, the subcommittee's job is not to actually rule. The subcommittee's job is to simply gather the information and allow the staff to uh, put together uh, the data they need in order to come back to the full commission to make a decision. Okay, uh, concluding that we are we are adjourned until uh, our next meeting. Uh, thank you all for a 
Good meeting. Have a good night.